Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Chris Mohan. Uh, hey, you might be noticing that uh, the last couple of Fork Full of Noodles that you guys have watched have uh, some background laughter in it. And that's because they are recorded at the live virtual stand-up comedy shows called The Citizen Revolution. Each week at The Citizen Revolution, we talk about a different topic, a different sociopolitical or economic issue, history, philosophy, that sort of stuff. And ideally, we try to add jokes to it. Uh, and each week, we also donate half of those ticket sales to a grassroots organization. For example, the episode that you're about to watch, we donated half of our uh, ticket sales to the Tidewater DSA, uh, in Norfolk, Virginia, the Tidewater Democratic Socialists of America. So if you would like to be a part of one of these shows and support independent, socially conscious uh, stand-up comedy, uh, as well as a grassroots organization, then grab your tickets and come to one of these Citizen Revolution shows. They're going to be happening pretty much all throughout the year uh, in some capacity. They usually happen on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Tickets are only $5. Uh, if you want to give a little bit more, you totally can. Um, and if you don't get a ticket if you're, or if you're on financial hard times, uh, feel free to message me and I'm very happy to give you a free ticket to come to these shows. Uh, so, so if you want to do that, check out the link in the description, grab a ticket and come hang out at one of these shows. They're super, super fun, as you can hear. Uh, it adds uh, it adds a little bit of a little bit of a looser element to it. I know some of this stuff gets very scripted, some of this stuff gets very heavy, but uh, with an audience there, it's the closest thing to having a live performance. So once again, this is Citizen Revolution shows Friday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. I hope that you can join us. Uh, and if you want free tickets to these shows uh, all the time, um, along with a bunch of awesome uh, bonus content that no one else gets, you can become a sustaining member right on my website at krishmohan.com, or rather krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N dot com slash donate. You can go there. You can become a sustaining member directly on my website or on my Patreon or via PayPal uh, or Bandcamp. There's multiple different ways that you can become a sustaining member and get uh, free tickets to the shows, to the Citizen Revolution shows. You get unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content. Uh, you get early access to the full episodes of these fork full of noodles before anybody else gets to see them, uh, and a bunch of other really cool stuff. Very little of, of my stuff is behind a paywall, but when it is behind a paywall, it's basically for, uh, you know, the sustaining members and things of that sort. So, and there's going to be some cool uh, stuff coming up uh, down the pipeline as well. Uh, so thanks for, for listening to these announcements, and uh, let's dive into this week's episode. Right now in America, uh, we're not just facing like a vast income divide, right? We're also facing a major wealth divide. And in order to try to really understand this, we have to look at what income and wealth is. Now, income is the amount of money you make. And that's before taxes. It's before taxes. Okay? Really, income ends up becoming like the amount you as a human worker are worth in monetary value on a yearly basis. It's nice. It's nice that they put a price on, on humanity there, you know? Now, in terms of capitalism, wealth includes the income, but it's also your assets, right? Which is like the stuff that you acquired and how they appreciate over time. And by appreciate, uh, I mean that the stuff is worth like, way more than a worker's income over time. Just way more. It's kind of like, um, appreciation is kind of like an unopened Star Wars action figure. You know, like, you know how like when you first bought that action figure back in 1971, it was worth like $1, but now in 2020, it's worth like $86 billion, you know? <laughs> right. And if there was a factory defect, it's worth a hundred and twenty-eight billion dollars. <laughs> so true. Or, or uh, what that amount, <laughs> what that amount is now known as, is a half a Bezos. It's worth half a Bezos. 
that's what it means to appreciate in value, right? But I'd say that that toy wasn't appreciated at all, right? You left a Star Wars action figure in the box? <laughs> what the, what do you, what do you fucking tell? What do you, like, Luke never fought Vader? Found out that was his dad? Spoilers. Sorry, you haven't seen a 40-year-old movie. <laughs> Right, Yoda never, Yoda never came back to to teach Luke. You know, you didn't you didn't create a new fantasy adventure that involved the return of Obi Wan Kenobi as an evil Force ghost, which is already better than the sequel trilogy ever could be. <laughs> I mean, I'd say that you didn't appreciate <laughs> that Star Wars action figure at all. I, I really, how could you appreciate something when you didn't let it live? <clears throat> now, we've come to this point in our society that the cost of living and food go up, but wages stay pretty stagnant. And not just that, but we don't value intellect or creativity or problem solving in our society, considering that when there are budget cuts, those are the things we cut first, right? It's like the educational equivalent of keeping toys in their original packaging. Don't let them <laughs> <laughs> Basically, we've appreciated our stuff way more. <laughs> like, we've over-appreciated our things, you know? In this grand canyon of income divides, we're living in a state where the worth of workers and the human consciousness is appreciated less than, oh, I don't know, let's just say like a shiny rock or like a really big boat. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> So because of this income divide, there's 80% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck because worth and wealth for the average working class is directly connected to their income. And it's basically, so the working day American right now is burdened with 75% of the debt in this country, right? From mortgages to car and student loans, credit card debt, and even debt to friends for bailing you out when you failed to be a drug mule because you were trying to pay off all of those other debts, <laughs> those debts are also overwhelming the American economy. And right now, if you take all of those debts together, the American populace cumulatively has $13.5 trillion in debt as of 2019. Now, in 2020, that amount has grown to $14 trillion, uh, plus all of your firstborn children. It's really just going up. <laughs> you can have mine. <laughs> I, yeah, you're, get, you're ahead of the curve if you want. <laughs> mine too. Oh man, is everybody just gonna give me their children? That's a very irresponsible move. <laughs> you can have my kids. <laughs> These are all very irresponsible moves. <laughs> Look, if, the, if that number, $13.5 trillion, gave anybody a heart palpitation, that's not just the shock of the numeric value of the debt, but it's also the fact that unfettered capitalism is a health issue, right? Millennials are, are, are likely to die 40% sooner than Gen Xers because the wealth gap has put them in a position that they can't afford health care for themselves or their families. Meanwhile, Boomers just keep getting stronger and stronger, despite the fact that there is a virus that is unleashed upon the planet that is specifically meant to kill them. Makes no sense. Now, according to the VP of strategy at Blue Cross Blue Shield, Mark Toluto, millennials don't see physicians regularly because uh, not just of, because of the cost of, of health insurance, but the trust between the doctors and the healthcare providers. But come on, why would we trust a doctor who just wants to dope you up and get free swag bags from a healthcare provider that just bought them a new Porsche, right? As far as I see it, that is as much our Porsche as it is your Porsche, Doc, okay? Considering that it was the pre-existing conditions that fucking paid for the thing, you know? State of, the, our, our state of healthcare is so bad to unfettered capitalism that millennials 
have no choice now to go back to using leeches to cure their migraines. <laughs> <laughs> and spoiler alert, you guys, it doesn't work. <laughs> it's a bad idea. You're right. I don't think it would. <laughs> but here's the thing. We do it so we can like feel, you know, something. Now, <laughs> according to the Center for Disease Control, 90% 90 uh, 90 of expenditures of the, uh, America's healthcare is on mental health or chronic conditions, which makes sense because uh, a healthcare for a profit system is driving us fucking crazy. Real fair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so because work conditions are going, uh, because of the, these conditions are going untreated due to lack of affordability, they worsen, and uh, a, a sick workforce leads to less efficiency or a stoppage of work altogether, right? At this point, even our illnesses want a general strike. <laughs> <laughs> this also proves that millennials aren't really lazy. We're, we're just too sickly to work. <laughs> Look, a, a very sick workforce can tax the healthcare system and create a lot of problems in the supply chain. Now, Mark Toluto of uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield wants workers to work collectively with the insurance companies to help decline the rate of millennial health and uh, try to reduce the economic impacts. Now, work collectively kind of sounds like socialism, huh? doesn't it, right? Come on, Mark Toluto. If you're talking for Medi about Medicare for All, just say it. You know, you just need to come out and say Medicare for All, stop tiptoeing around, and just ask us to the socialist dance already. You know, we'll say yes, probably. We'll do that weird middle school thing where we hold each other at the hips and are way too far apart from each other. You know, we'll do that. Just say Medicare for All. No, but in reality, this is just about making sure that the insurance companies don't have to cover the bill, right? They, they want us to give up things like food or shelter or water to ensure that the health insurance companies don't have to be burdened with the costs of the sick. But they fail to ask the question, why do we need to make this Sophie's choice regarding our basic needs? Even Social Security is part of this wealth gap, right? Most average Americans contribute about 12% of their annual income to Social Security. But if you make over a million dollars, you don't have to contribute to that system at all. And if the millionaires and billionaires did pay their fair share into the program, there would be an additional $1.4 trillion for Social Security. The way the system is set, is set up uh, it creates a health crisis that investigative reporter Nomi Prince, who wrote this article, uh, says unbalances the mind and body. The top 1% have their, don't, don't really have their wealth connected to their income because their incomes are, are only a small part of their wealth. Their wealth is connected to and cushioned by these created financial institutions, uh, such as the Federal Reserve Bank, or as the cool kids call it, the Fed. And just in case anybody is wondering, uh, I am one of those cool kids, you guys. So, uh, yeah. I'm writing, yeah, I am writing a whole show about economics. Tell me what's cooler than that, you guys. <laughs> Fucking nothing, that's right. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty, pretty cool. Talked to upwards of 10 girls in high school, so. <laughs> about economics? About economics. <laughs> only, four of, only four of them were scared of me for the rest of the year. So that's a pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good hit rate on that. <laughs> <laughs> and that has been your fork full of noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please give it a like. 
please give it a share. Get the word out about these things. Content like this often gets suppressed. Uh, it doesn't really get shown to as many people as it possibly could because it's not content that YouTube finds or Facebook finds particularly friendly to the algorithm. So I depend on you guys hitting that like button and hitting that share button. And make sure that you're subscribed to get more videos like this. I put up videos on this channel pretty consistently. Uh, there are at least uh, three to six videos that go up on this channel every single week, maybe more. Sometimes I get the chance to do more, sometimes it's a little bit less. Uh, but videos like this, videos like The Fork Full of Noodles, videos like The Dispatch, which are more uh, current events and news based rather than big idea based. Uh, we do some ranty stuff over some news stories that might have slipped through the cracks that corporate mainstream media isn't talking about. And of course, stand up comedy clips uh, that I will be posting uh, infrequently throughout the year since. I'm not particularly doing live stand-up right now because of the uh, because of the current pandemic situation we're in. Uh, but that's why we've pivoted to the online mode. So uh, like I mentioned at the top of the show, these are part of the Citizen Revolution live stand-up comedy shows. And if you would like to be a part of the audience in a future Citizen Revolution live stand-up comedy show, grab your tickets right now. The link is in the description, or you can grab it directly off of my website as well. I'm pretty much going to be doing these for the duration of the year. They happen on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Tickets are only $5. They're only $5. Uh, you can donate a little bit more if you would like. And we're going to be donating to, um, to, to amazing grassroots uh, organizations, activists, journalists, um, people that I think are very important right now that don't have any sort of corporate funding they are funded much like myself by the people, by, by people that watch their things, by people that believe in what they're doing. Um, so if you want to be a part of that, you can uh, check out the links in the description or go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. While you're there, uh, you can become a sustaining member or make an additional donation, a, a one-time donation if you would like to, uh, directly from my website uh, by going to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N dot com, H-A-H-A dot com slash donate. I'm fucking up my own website, you guys. Um, but uh, sustaining members uh, get uh, a free ticket to all of the uh, live virtual stand-up comedy shows that I do. Uh, they get uh, additional unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling material. Uh, they get um, early access to the, the comprehensive full episodes of Forkful of Noodles. And there's going to be a bunch of other cool stuff that I'm going to be trying to do, uh, particularly for the sustaining members as well. Um, maybe some Q&A sessions thing, uh, specifically for, for them and, and things of that sort. So uh, I'm working on those sort of things right now. Um, so, so becoming a sustaining member gets, gets you access to a bunch of different stuff. Um, it's it, between the Citizen Revolution shows and the um, sustaining memberships and the donations is pretty much how I'm going to be making my living uh, f going forward till we are out of this pandemic world. Uh, so if you want to be a part of that, if you want to support independent media and a, a grassroots organization, please do uh, consider becoming a sustaining member or grabbing a ticket to one of these shows. While you're on my website, you can also grab a copy of my brand new album, Politely Angry, uh, available on all of the all of the platforms that it would be available on, uh, from your iTunes to your Pandoras and your Google Plays and your Deezers and so on and so forth. Uh, the album talks a lot about um, it, how religion and e economics are connected together, how religion and capitalism are connected together. Uh, the uh, the problem with uh, the prison industrial complex, and of course, I'm gonna take down Jeff Bezos. I'm gonna do a little takedown of Jeff Bezos because that guy fucking deserves it, right? So, uh, if any of that sort of stuff interests you, please grab a copy of the album. Uh, it, it's also available on Bandcamp for one dollar, uh, so that no one gets priced out. Um, and I am also working on planning uh, to donate one half of. Um, the album sales to a grassroots venue uh, that I have worked with in the past. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys uh, consider uh, donating to that, um, purchasing an album and helping out. 
Uh, and I also have a merch store now with t-shirts and mugs and a bunch of other cool stuff uh, that's also available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys come and check out uh, more of these videos. There's a, a bunch more coming up. Uh, I post pretty frequently on this channel, so if you're new, uh, please make sure that you uh, have subscribed to get updates. Uh, and if you are a returning viewer, thank you. You're fucking awesome. Uh, but also, please make sure that you are continue to be subscribed to this channel because uh, sometimes they unsubscribe people. So and with, with all that said, thank you so much. 